How to set up the Chattanooga Intellect Legend for a high volt treatment. And choose high volt, click. Look over here at the screen, and these are the things we're going to be changing. Uh, by the way, the default treatment time is 20 minutes. Treatment time for high volt can be anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes. It automatically defaults to channel number 2, which is going to be important in how we set up our pads. So what I've done right here, I'm not actually setting it up on a human, but I wanted to show you there are four leads that come out of the Chattanooga and they're labeled with a teeny little number either right on the black or red part or on the little uh, a little white part right by the lead. This one here says channel 2 and it is black. This says channel uh, 2 and it is red. We're going to have with high volt the active pad will be on channel 2 black the dispersive pad will be on channel 2 red. The, the, the active pad will be put on the problem. The dispersive pad will be put somewhere big, low back, back of shoulder, like near the traps, scap area, on the front part of the thigh, or on the back of the calf. Why those four areas? Because they have low sensation. The dispersive pad should be three to four times the size. It could be a sticky pad like this, or a sponge and a metal pad or it could be one of those carbon electrodes with ultrasound gel or a wet paper towel. So let's go look at the high volt screen right here. What we have here are several different choices. You have polarity, cycle time, sweep, frequency, ramp, and display. You can list them over there. Each of these will be controlled by using the down up arrow and then enter for changing the things on the right. For the method, we just leave it as pads. For polarity, what we're going to choose is negative. This has to do with the thing called Pfluger's Law, which states that you get a better action potential under the negative uh, pad. So we always set our active pad, which is the small pad that we used over here, to the uh, negative. After you do that, um, we're going we're to look at cycle time here. Now cycle time, we don't use it cycle time. Cycle time means there's an on-off phase. It contracts for a bit and then it goes off. The only two modalities of the four frequencies of the uh, motor nerve stem are, that need a cycle time are going to be one, the contractive, and two, the fatiguing. So let's go ahead and look at the choices that we have here. So the only ones we're going to use is a 5 to 5 ratio for fat if you're doing fatiguing. And you could do a 10 to 10. It, we don't have the ideal ratio of 5 to 1, so we just use a 1 to 1 ratio. It's pretty long. The second one we're going to use is going to be down here 10 to 50 and that's the one that we're going to use for contractive which means you're going to contract for 10 seconds and relax for 50 so over a 20 minute treatment you're going to end up with 20 contractions. The next thing we're going to do now is we'll go back into the other screen we'll hit enter on that one and now we're going to go to the idea of sweep. Sweep is something where we can actually go through a frequent re frequency range. Um, frequency ranges are good because if you're always tapping at one single amount of frequency, you get used to it. So to prevent the accommodation, we will use a sweep. The sweeps that we want to use uh, would be using the whole entire range that's available. The new machines don't offer all the kind of sweeps we like. If we wanted to get rid of myofascial adhesions using static frequency, we would use a 1 to 10 cycles per second range. If we wanted to use a uh, have a pumping effect to get rid of edema, like in an intermittent uh, motor nerve stem treatment, then we would have that one set from 12 to 20 cycles per second. The third one that we would use would be anywhere between 40 to 70, and that one's going to be for contractive. Contraction is so that we can strengthen the muscles. We can strengthen the muscles, prevent atrophy. We can also do muscle re-education. We can also tear up... Um, Adhesions that happen, like periarticular adhesions, like frozen shoulder. And then the fifth thing it can do is actually pump the legs, as in uh, the intermittent claudication. The fourth frequency of motor nerve stem is the fatiguing tetany. The fatiguing tetany is designed to actually make a muscle contract so long that it relaxes. It's to get rid of spasms. So the new machines, they don't have, they don't have sweeps through all of those. So let's look and see what they have. So I'm going to hit this enter button right here and you can see that it has a 1 to 10 which is the one that's good for myofascial adhesions. It has an 80 to 150 so it's not perfect. 81 to 20 would be perfect for fatiguing. 
And the last one we wouldn't use, which is a broad spectrum 1 to 150. So I'm going to keep it on continuous. I'm going to come down here to frequency. So again, if you hit enter and then you go down arrow, if you set it to 10, you're doing myofascial adhesion breaking. That's called static. You go up to 20, then you're going to be doing pumping edema. So that's called intermittent. If you go up to 50, anywhere between 40 and 70. So I like 50 because it's a good number. That one's good for contracting the muscle. The last one is going to be going, if you get past 80, 80 and above, so 80 to 120, is ideal for fatiguing, getting rid of those spasms. You don't have to mess with the ramp. That's how fast the impulse comes in. You don't need to mess with the display, so just leave them alone. Then to actually start the treatment, what you're going to be doing is increasing the intensity over here with this up arrow. You're going to ask the patients, is it good? Stop. Is it bad? So that's how I tell them to do it, because they're laying face down. After setting your intensity, hit the start button to start the timer and to turn the on-off phases of the cycle time. The patient will feel the difference, but you will not see a difference over in the intensity box on this particular unit.